pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, you are my God, and you are my redeemer. Amen. After reading that, I want to go home, go on the bed, and stay there. <laughs> I have been very fortunate in this life to have been allowed to travel to many foreign lands and see a great number of strange and wonderful sights on my travels. Have you ever considered the Christian faith to be a bridge over the rough places in this life? Maybe not the Christian faith. Maybe consider Christ himself as our bridge in our own life, when things are not going our way. In our scripture lesson, we read of things to come. <laughs> and maybe in some sense, some of these things have already happened in our lives. But they are all terrible to think about. The key verse for me, and I have to go to different translations to find out about what they say. Like this translation says endurance, other one says patience. It's on verse 19. Christ tells us, in your patience, possess your soul, or your endurance. Perhaps patience is the bridge that spans the gaps in our lives between what we ourselves want and what God wants for us. I used to be a very patient man. And I don't know what's going on because to my understanding you get patient as you go on in life. You know? I'm going backwards. I don't know why. What's going on? I'm losing my patience very quickly. Uh, but I know why that, that is for or what it's about. Uh, but my family always tells me things, says, Peter. Think twice. Open your mouth once. Because <laughs> I used to react very quickly on things and then either apologize or go, yee! I was right. Yeah. But it's true. We should think twice and open our mouth once to speak. Don't be haste on saying things that we might regret later on. But as some of you have heard me say, from the pulpit, in choosing scripture, in choosing a theme 
to preach on. I often address some areas in my own life where I feel most vulnerable at times. And patience is one of these areas for me. And perhaps it is for you as well. If we consider Christ or the Christian faith as a bridge and we consider patience in this same way, then we can perhaps gain an insight into the very nature of what God wants to tell us through Scripture today for us. The Almighty has to be of omnipotent patience. That's kind of like it. Like my father used to say, a Sunday word, you know, omnipotent. Wow. To abide the very actions of this sinful generation that we live in. As long as there have been churches and preachers and Christians, lay, lay persons or lay leaders, witnessing throughout the world, you will think that the world will be a place overrun with people of patience. But unfortunately, this is not the case. Today, I, I shouldn't say today, this week, I went to my wife business and I was fortunate enough to get one of the patients to come with me and help me out on a task that I wanted to do. And as we were driving, the gentleman says, you are a pastor, aren't you? And I said, yes. I said, I've been reading the Gospels, and I'm up to John. And I will understand, is John, was John, or was somebody else? Because Matthew was Matthew, isn't it? And I'm going, like, why are you getting into that? <laughs> well, he kept insisting, you know. And of course, my patience <laughs> begin to draw thin with him. But it's a matter of understanding. It's a matter of knowing where things come from. I said to him. And then I give him, I said, well, first of all, I like Mark because Mark is kind of like the basic. You see, you read from the other ones about Mark, but from the other ones, from Mark, you don't read about the other ones. So for me, that tells me that Mark was kind of like isolated, was kind of like the first, you know. And then it came Mark and then Luke. And Luke, of course, was the medical. And I explained to him, you know, how, how detailed he speaks in his gospel, you know, about things, about, about if a woman, you know, was bleeding. He just doesn't say was bleeding. You know, he goes into detail about the kind of bleeding that woman had and so on and so forth. Because he was a doctor, he was a medical doctor, you know. So he begins to understand a little bit better about scripture. But one thing that she, that he and I had in common was that we lose our patience very quickly. And we act impulsively about things in our lives. And I ask you, 
How patient do you think God is? And he says, you know, when I was reading the story about Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, and about Abraham, I was really ticked off. I, that's not his words, but that's what the words I'm going to use. <laughs> I said, if I was God, I would be very ticked off about with Abraham. I said, why? I said, because he keep pushing and pushing God and, and just nagging at him. You know, if I found at least one righteous person, would you say that? You know, he started with, you know, 10 and then he keep going lower and lower and lower to see, you know. I say God is very patient. And we should be patient as well. He said to me, and God says, I will not destroy it for the sake of twenty. And Abraham said, Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak but once more. See? Hey. Right How about four? Four. And so on and so forth. See, a lot of people tell me, oh, I got a list of things that I'm going to ask God, you know, when I die and I'm in front of Him. You know, all the things that I want to say. I remember, I have my own list in confirmation, I remember. But then, before confirmation ended, I brought it, I remember. The pastor, he was 89 years old, you know. And I brought some, just to see if he can answer us, some of them, you know. I said, oh, Peter, he said, I was about, what, 12 years old, 13 years old? Oh, Peter, he cracked his smile and he says, you know, I'm going to tell you something, and I don't know if you will understand, but later in your life, you will understand. He says, you can have all your lists you want, but the minute you die, you will not meet that list. And I go, okay, yeah, you were right. I will not understand what you're saying now. <laughs> but later on, I understood what he said that day because once I die, everything will be revealed to me and I will not have to go to God and ask Him because I will know the answer already. So, patience. What is a saying? Those patience is a virtue. The Son of us are lacking of. <clears throat> so I said to him that I think the first person that I would like to see when I get to him will be Abraham. I want to meet somebody with such a big head that he went against and tested God. I want to meet this guy. In the book of James, we are told, Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and patience. I will add to take here the example of the Lord and his patience with Abraham. <coughs> the scripture tells us to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. 
And in this perfection there is patience. This is the bridge that carries us across the abyss of human imperfection and link us to the infinite, perfect patience found in God. The bridge that connects us with one another. As we worship today, we are connected to each and every one of our brothers and sisters all around the world. We get strength, we get patience. Sometimes our patience is the bridge for others. I remember my brother seeing how I handle my children. He says, ah, I wish I had your patience. If it was me, I would have already taken my belt out. I was the bridge for him. And he learned patience from when he had his children. See, in 1990 era, it was a hit song. Anybody can remember the duo Simon and Garfunkel? Aha, uh -huh. somebody said yes. Like a bridge over troubled waters. Few people realize that that song that lyrics were borrowed from a thousand old Negro song. I was surprised to hear it. I thought they were the ones that wrote it. But they sing it, and it's a catchy tune. When you were worried, feeling down, when trouble is all around, I will comfort you. I'm on your side when things get bad. When friends just can't be found, like a bridge over troubled waters, I will lay me down. See, when there is troubles, that's where you know where your friends are. Because people kind of spread out, leave you alone. Pretty much the promise of God found in the words of this all spiritual reworked into the folk song. that speaks on verse 19 that possesses our soul. This warning by Christ in troubled times. It is through our impatience that we find ourselves getting out of touch with God. Out of step with our faith. Out of left field when it comes to our own understanding of per perfection. If we are to be perfect as we know God to be perfect, or if we strive for this perfection, then we must be patient and wait upon the Lord in all things. <coughs> when we pray, 
when we do things. I remember as a little boy, you know, my father was teaching me how to plant things, you know, crops and stuff like that. And uh, he told me, you know, we dig a hole, we put the seed, you know, put in, put some water and everything. And we did this, you know, like systematically, you know, and so on and so forth. And uh, I couldn't wait the next morning, you know, wake up at five o'clock. You know, I went there and I looked. <laughs> Nothing. So I went, jumped on bed. Dad, Dad, we did something wrong. I said, what are you talking about? There's nothing there. Be patient. Be patient. It will grow. And they did. And they did. We sometimes missed the boat. Then finally, we look to that example of Christ and the enormous patience He displayed with that frail band of twelve that we call the disciples. Through patience, He bridged the very wide gaps of doubt and self-interest they harbor in their own lives and bound them together in one's strong faith. Today his love and patience help us banish the difference that sometimes arise between us, the church, and us, the people. We struggle to learn, to live, to grow, and become more like God would have us to be by building bridges over the spans in life that often appear to separate us instead of unite us. Sometimes they appear suddenly like great crevices throughout, during earthquakes. Other times they come as though sand sifting away to the funnel of an hour glance. Yet always it is a task of love and self-sacrifice, an adventure in faith that requires superhuman effort in the area of patience to bridge over the space. It took me 10 years to bridge the gap to build the bridge between me and my father so that he can forgive himself so he can commune with me once again. Ten years. More than often it requires us to become that bridge over troubled waters. We need to lay ourselves down to be examples of patience to others. Christ is calling us to be patient, not with ourselves alone, but with others with our spouses, with our children, with our neighbors, with our fellow drivers. This person that I was with was also in the military and he says, you know, sometimes I wish I drive a tank. And I said, what did you drove in uh, the military? He said, I drove a, a big truck, a 6 by I don't know. If that's, that's a huge truck, a 6 by And uh, I said, why are you tank? I said, oh, because all these stupid people <laughs> that cut you off and stuff like that, I was just one of them. Go over them. So on and so forth. I go like, that's, didn't we 
talk about patience. <laughs> We need to be patient and be glad that we have a God that allows us to be patient. <laughs>